thing, amen to God. I'll get in trouble. Amen. Just told her I gotta watch out of names I say. But this woman, I guess, had been to church and she said she had just seen people living like a hypocrite. They well, supposedly, praise God, know God, but they love you to your face and stab you in the back when they leave. Oh, come on, man. Come on, come on. Now. This is a preach now, amen come on. to God. Y'all help me. Hallelujah. They love you to your face, but stab you in the back. Come on. Praise God when you're not around. So she was telling Lori, praise God, she said, you know, I just really wish I could see a legitimate person that lives for God. Hallelujah. Come on. I do too. Amen to God. And I'll tell you, we got to talking, Brother Billy, and we sat down and kind of did like a self-examination <coughs> of ourselves. And I'll tell you, I asked her to tell me and, I, and vice versa. And I'll tell you, you know, we both come out saying, man, we could do better than what we do. Come on. And you said, Brother Mike, you're a minister and you're saying you could do better? Let me tell you something. Each and every one of us in here tonight can do better. Amen. And we should strive to do better. Amen. Amen. See, praise God, Paul, if y'all remember over Romans chapter 7, Paul said, and Paul, a great teacher, an apostle, an evangelist, a minister. Yeah. Before he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, hallelujah to God, he was a student of the Word. He knew the law. You couldn't get nothing over him. Praise God. He was, dare I say, religious. Yeah. Boy, I tell you, he could quote it better than anybody. Come on. He thought he was doing service for God by killing believers. Come on. I mean, he really thought that. Until he met Jesus. Amen. See, praise God, the law, amen to God, was done away with at the cross. Come on. Now, I know some people still, they, they hang on to that law and the legalism of it. But see, legalism keeps you bound up. It puts a chain on you and says, hey, if you do this, you're going to be in trouble. See, the law points out, amen to God, your faults and failures, but grace and mercy, praise God, says amen to God, they're under the blood. Come on. Thank God for that. Because the Lord we serve is not meant to condemn you, but to love you and to bring you back home, amen, God, and change your life. But Paul, when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus here, and he met him and he got changed, his eyes were opened up to, hey, there is more to the law than what I've learned. There's grace and mercy and love. Because if the man who killed all these believers. He was there when Stephen was stoned to death. Amen. Stephen, amen to God, a great minister. Hallelujah to God, a great servant of the Lord. When they were stoning him, Brother Billy, he was still praising God. Amen. Now, how many of us can say tonight if we get persecuted, we'll praise him? Amen to God. Most of us probably wouldn't if we be honest. Come on. But Paul, or Saul before he became Paul, was there, amen, on the scene to see the execution of Stephen. But when he met Jesus and he understood this whole grace and mercy and love, his message changed. It wasn't a condemnation message, Brother Billy, after that. It was a message of love and peace, praise God, of mercy and grace. The God we serve wants to save you, change you, amen to God. Amen. Make you, praise God, His child. Make you His own, amen to God. Bless you with all the riches of the kingdom, the benefits of the kingdom, amen to God. Healing, praise God. Victory, deliverance, praise God. It's all ours because of Christ and what He did at the cross. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Paul right here, amen to God, got the revelation of the cross. So in Romans 7, when Paul said, he said, the things I want to do, I don't. But the things I shouldn't be doing is what I do. Come on. And you say, Brother Mike, Paul was the man, was the preacher man, but he still struggled with the sin nature. Amen? Come on. And the only way to overcome the sin nature is through Christ and what He did at Calvary. Amen? Amen. So if Paul can say this now, chances are we're going to say it too. How many of you tonight, honestly, and if you want to raise your hand, you know, praise God, we're not doing it to embarrass you, but just honestly before God. The things you should be doing, you don't. Come on. And the things you shouldn't be doing, you do. Amen. <laughs> I'll use me as an example. Got a little upset the other day with a phone call I got from my ex. 
wasn't happy on what I heard. Lori told me, she said, Mike, you need to go pray after you talk to her. Now, I'm spilling the beans on myself, amen to God. I wanted to put my fist through the wall. You said, Brother Mike, you lost your temper. Yes, I did. Hallelujah. I'm not going to hell over it. I'm just <coughs> telling you, praise God, the things, hallelujah to God, that we should be doing, we don't. I should have got down and prayed. I should have got down and read the Word. I should have said, Lord, amen to God, I'm going to get mad. I'm going to get the flesh. But I'm glad we sit down and had that talk, though, because it really opened my eyes to some things. That, praise God, I could treat my brothers and sisters better than I do. And I could do more of what God has called me to do. See, I can't change nobody, but I have to work on me. And praise God, hallelujah, I've gotten past the whole point of trying to change people. Because, see, ministers, amen to God, preachers, teachers, evangelists, we can't change you. Jesus is the only one that can change you. Come on. But see, if we start with ourselves, getting the things right, amen to God, in our lives that we know we need to make right, amen to God, then we can help, amen to God. We can give out, amen to God, the Word of God that can change your life completely. Hallelujah to God. See, I can't help you, praise God, if I've never been an alcoholic. I can't help you if I've not ever been a drug addict because I don't know those things. But if I've had problems, amen to God, with depression, I can help you with that, amen? I've had depression, amen to God, four years ago. Some of you that don't know my testimony, praise God. A minister of the gospel, amen to God. Been serving the Lord. My wife left me. I put a 22 pistol in my mouth and tried to blow my brains out. I got so low, I allowed the devil to take me down so low when I knew I should have been praising God. Amen? Come on. And for that, there was consequences. Did God forgive me? Yes, He did. Did God raise me back up? Yes, He did. Is there consequences? Yes. My right side is not 100%. There's issues with me seeing my son, my oldest boy. But God is still good. Amen. Because I tell you, I could be in a grave tonight. And I'll be here proclaiming the good news of the gospel. Amen? Amen. So Paul and them are writing to us here in 2 Thessalonians. Excuse me, 2 Thessalonians 1 here. They're writing, praise God, this letter, praise God, to show you, hallelujah, the way we need to treat one another, the way we need to do things, to encourage Christians, amen, to God. This is a perfect outline of it. Amen? Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 1 4 for a second. Paul is showing us here right now two things in this verse. He says in verse 4 of chapter 1, Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. There's two things in there right there you need to see. One, God loves you. Amen? Come on. And two, He's chosen you. He has a purpose for your life. You got that out of that verse? Yes, I did. Praise God. If you read it, it's right there. Thank you, son. Say amen with me. Praise God. God loves us, and He's chosen you, praise God. And you know, if He's chosen you to do something, praise God, hallelujah, it's special. It's going to bring Him the glory, honor, and praise. Amen? Amen. So why don't we take the gifts that God has given us and start using them? For some people, praise God, it may be ministry. For some, it may be singing. For some, it may be teaching, like that dear brother said earlier. God has called him to teach. God has called Brother Billy to pastor this church. He's called me into evangelistic work. And I'll tell you, my heart really goes out to Brother Billy because a pastor really goes through more than, than the teacher does and the evangelist does because they have to put up with a lot. And you ought to thank the Lord for your pastor because Brother Billy is the tr genuine, true deal. And I'm not saying this to butter him up and fluff him up like a turkey. Praise God. I'm just telling you right now, amen to God, Brother Billy is the real deal. When he tells you something, when God has spoken to him, praise God, you can guarantee it's from the Lord. Amen? I'll tell you, there's never not been a time when I couldn't text or email or talk to Brother Billy and ask him something of the Lord and he not give me good godly advice. Amen? So we ought to thank God for Brother Billy, our pastor, praise God. You say, amen, yes, he's my pastor, amen to God. I love him. Praise God. That brother don't realize how much he's helped me. He don't realize how much, amen to God, thank the Lord for him. I know I get on his nerves a lot, but amen to God, it's all right. Come on. Amen to God. He still loves me. Hallelujah. Amen. He'll say, I got his nerve, but he loves me. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I love him too. Praise God. 
All those many times back there, we've eaten greasy peanut butter cups. Amen to God. He wouldn't eat raisins with me, but praise God. He's having our sandwiches and chips. Just the fellowship back there. The, the true fellowship that we were having. Amen to God. Now, that's what, amen to God, believers need to do. Fellowship one with another. Amen. Encourage the brethren. Love the brethren. Not beat you up over your sins. Amen to God. Now, don't get me wrong, praise God. If you're in sin, we need to tell you about it. I believe we ought to come and say, listen, hey, you're doing this wrong. You need to repent and get back to God. But amen to God, as far as condemning you into hell, praise God, we need to stop that. We need to quit being the judge, juror, and executioner, amen to God. And let's just love one another back the way Christ loves us, amen? So you can have all the spiritual gifts flowing. But if you don't have charity or love for your brother and neighbor, Prophet of nothing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So my prayer tonight is this. Lord, give me more of your love. Help me to love my neighbor as myself. Amen. Help me to love those, praise God, that I may not consider lovable. Help me to love them as you love me. Amen. Because if we start looking at it from his eyes, amen to God, I'll tell you, he spoke to me one time. He said, how would you feel if I treated you the way you treated me? That hurt right there. Because at that time in my life, I was mad at God. Hallelujah. I didn't want to talk to Him. didn't want to have nothing to do with Him. And Sister Nancy said it earlier tonight, praise God. She said, when you first fall in love, you want to do anything, praise God. You want to be around that person. You want to talk to them, giggle, laugh, write notes, do goofy things. You're just silly, amen, to God all the time. You want to have a communication with them. The same way with God. We need to fall back in love with Jesus. Amen. Somebody say, I need to fall back in love with amen. Jesus. Amen, amen to God. Amen. And we need that. We need, praise God, the Holy Ghost to stir up back in us again that fire, that love. Praise God. We need to go back to our first love. Amen, amen. to God. And right, quit going to whoring after, praise God, the things of the world and start living back with Jesus. Amen to God. Amen. That's some Amen. good preaching right there. Amen to God. You may not agree with it, but still good preaching. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If we fall back in love with our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, amen to God, I tell you, things are going to happen. If you let God be God in your life, you're going to find out, praise God, He's going to use you more. Come on. You're going to start seeing signs, wonders, and miracles take place. Amen to God. Hallelujah. You say, Brother Mike, I want God to use me. Well, let Him. Come on. Praise God. Quit trying to be God and Him being the servant. Let God be God. Amen. You are the creation and He is the creator. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody look over and say, God created me. God created me. To live for Him. <laughs> live for Him. And not live for self. <laughs> hey, live for self. Amen. We need to encourage one another. How many need some encouragement today? Come on. Amen. Thank you, brother. Love you, man. Amen to God. I appreciate it, Brother Rodney. 1 Thessalonians 1 6, it said, And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, but with joy of the Holy Ghost. When you get persecuted, praise God, we should come and lift you up. I think that's why Jesus sent them out by two, Brother Billy. I believe that's why he did that. Because when one would minister, if somebody would come against them, the other one would be there to lift them up and support them. Amen to God. See, God does things in twos. Amen to God. Amen. The Bible says one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. Amen. Amen. You do the math after that, go over to God. Why was giving me the works? Go over. I apologize about that. Hey man, ain't nothing wrong with me up here. I just burps. I apologize on that. Hey man, God, hallelujah. <laughs> I saw a couple of you look at me a while ago. 